Hello and welcome to this review of the new round of Ace Partech Hall Effect keyboards. First off, I must apologize for the state of my voice. I've got a hideous cold, so I'm sorry if the quality of the voiceover is not up to the usual standard. I've done a review on the two previous generations before, which were these two. These are very interesting keyboards hand-built by a Chinese company called Acepad Tech, who have revived the Hall Effect switch in keyboards, which is a very exciting development, as Hall Effect switches are historically excellent switches, and APT's version made it to the fourth spot of my top five linear switches of all time list. Armor piercing tracer high explosive rounds, I mean Ace Patek Hall effect switches, are very complicated switches that use magnets to produce a transverse voltage in a parallel circuit through a semiconductor. This method grants supreme durability and contactless sensing among others. Going from the first to the second generation, they made a number of improvements, and to this third generation, they've again made a whole bunch of improvements, as well as adding the option to get the switches in tactile and clicky versions, where there was previously only the option to go with linear. Now this is very exciting because although linear Hall Effect keyboard switches have existed since 1970, in the guise of the famous micro switch dual magnet switches, which were excellent, but tactile and clicky ones have never been done before, so these Ace Patek switches are truly unique. They're also a very daring venture, as one of the core features of a Hall Effect switch, besides its incredible reliability, for these switches conservatively estimated at 100 million operations per switch, although I'm pretty sure it's a lot higher than that, is the fact that it's contactless. In other words, unlike more common switch designs, no physical contact is required between the slider and the sensing element. This reduces friction and is the reason why Hall Effect switches are often very smooth. Using a tactile or clicky element almost by definition requires some sort of contact or friction to disrupt the key feel and create that tactile bump and or clicky noise. So trying to introduce this into a Hall Effect switch can easily go at the expense of the smoothness of the switch if not done well. The way it works in these APT switches is as follows. In the clicky switches, a very thin wire that resembles a tiny fucked up paper clip is put in a recess in the switch housing, which is pulled up by the slider and released when it clears it. It functions almost identical to the clicky Alps design, although those used solid leaves rather than wire frames, and Alps switches had the leaf move forward rather than vertically. The tactile wires look almost exactly the same, except they're a bit taller than the clicky ones, so they don't have the room to move and thereby make a clicky noise. Again, it's somewhat analogous to the Alps solution, which used retaining tabs instead, and also like Alps, this comes at the cost of some of the tactility, so the tactile switches are not as tactile as the clicky ones are. As a demonstration of these new switches, APT sent me two keyboards, one acrylic model with tactile switches for the nav cluster and linears for everything else, and one of their bamboo keyboards, yes, they do bamboo keyboards, decked out completely with clicky ones. This time they sent me 10 keyless models, but they also do full size and 60% keyboards. First I'm going to talk about some general improvements they made to all the switches though. In order to improve the noise of the switches, which was a bit rattly before, they added some foam pads to the top and bottom of the slider to dampen the upstroke as well as the downstroke, which made the noise a lot better, which is good because I found the rattly noise to be one of the weaker aspects of the original design. Now it's a lot less rattly and it also sounds much bassier. Here's a comparison between the current linear switches and the ones from before. Also, thankfully, I found this foam to not impact the key feel at all. Another change is that they tightened the mount for the keycaps. As I mentioned in the first video, the keycaps could come off rather easily during shipping, and this now appears to be fixed because the mount is pretty strong. It's not impossible, but you really need to take a lot of effort to pull them off with your bare hands. There were also some general improvements to the keyboards themselves, by the way. The keyboard cases are made from sheets which are screwed together, which results in an actually solid chassis, and therefore an extremely tough build, and a weight of 870 grams for the bamboo model, and as much as 1.3 kilos for the acrylic one. 
The new ones even feel a lot tougher and denser than the previous versions, as this new 10 keyless model weighs just as much as the full-size version from the last iterations, and almost as much as a Dell Bigfoot, which is much bigger. Speaking of which, they upped the build quality a fair bit anyway, they use brass screw sockets now, which I'm a big fan of, so thumbs up there. The case is now a wraparound design with bezels rather than having floating switches like this, and this better protects the switches and looks more elegant anyway in my opinion. And the acrylic boards are now made out of two sheets rather than three, which is a little neater. In fact, one thing I remarked that was a little disappointing on the previous versions was that, the keyboards being handmade, the sheets never aligned 100% perfectly, so the sides didn't look very tidy, but this generation they made the case almost perfectly seamless. The case also looks softer and matte as opposed to shiny, I guess because a fair few people don't like shiny plastic cases. Personally I don't mind, but I've seen a lot of comments about it in my first video, so I guess this is their response to that. I like it. It's a nice, unassuming look that I don't think would miss suit even an office environment. I did find that this particular acrylic one had some white residue from the CNC machine in the top row. The previous ones didn't have that, and according to APT, they're already dealing with the issue. Another thing they changed in the new version is the feet. Now I'm not talking about flip out feet because none of the versions have that. I'm talking about these rubber non-slip pads. Now originally they used these rubber strips but these are very easy to move or come off and in fact this has happened several times on this one already. So they changed them with these round white ones which not only stick in place a lot better but I think they also look more elegant. There were also comments about the tongue oil that they used to waterproof the bamboo cases, which is rather pungent for a while until it kind of airs out, so instead they're now using a wax which doesn't smell at all, so I think that's a nice improvement too. Speaking of which, it being partially waterproof is quite nice, which was demonstrated just this morning when I accidentally threw a sizable amount of squash into it during a violent coughing fit, but it never once as much as blinked and it's still working fine. They now also offer a teak version of the keyboard cut out of a single piece of wood so it doesn't use sheets like the bamboo and acrylic versions. It looks great and it doesn't even appear to be more expensive unless I misunderstood the website, which to be honest I might have done as it's a bit confusing. They do have a new logo thing which I think they lasered into the case but they did it rather superficially so it came out really ugly. I think I'd advise them to either cut the logo in deeper or just leave it off because to be honest it doesn't look great. Most of the other stuff is still the same, they still use the same backlighting and keycaps both of which have their own pros and cons. To quickly recap, the backlighting is full RGB and customizable using keyboard commands but it's not fully programmable at this time yet and the keycaps are double shot PBT POM which is the most durable and most high quality type of printing and keycap material that you can get, but they're not the best sounding, and the font is not particularly good looking either I think. Thankfully it's nowhere near as bad as one of those gaming cyber fonts, which are spit ugly in my opinion, actually the font is very normal, but it's got a weird stenciled look to it which I'm not a big fan of. I tested it for N-key rollover and while it doesn't have full N-key rollover, presumably as a result of the limitations of the USB interface, it has a rollover high enough that you'll never go over it unless you have four or five hands, so you shouldn't run into any troubles there. Also, the stabilizers have changed, they clip into the stabilizer wire now and they're not compatible with MX mount stabs, the mount is smaller so it doesn't work with custom keycaps with MX mount stabilizers which is basically all of them. Thankfully I've devised a simple workaround. If you take some kind of simple film, for example this ice cube bag, and cut out a bit, you can slide it over the stab and it will fit MX mount anyway. See that works quite well now. Looks pretty nice with a set of dasher caps I'd say even. Anyway, onto the new switches, starting off with the clicky ones, as they're the ones I use most because of course they decked out a whole board with those, as opposed to just a nav cluster on the other board. So these clicky ones are, in two words, pretty great. Honestly, I really like them. Like I said, it's a bit dicey to try and make whole effect switches clicky, but I think they came out very well. The key feel has a nice, medium-sized, but sharp, precise, tactile bump that feels very satisfying and they're nicely weighted as well. The standard keys come with 60 gram springs, bottom out weight, with an 80 gram spring for the spacebar. 
The sound is also pretty good. Have a listen. Of course, as always, SA caps enhance the sound considerably. Tactile ones are quite a different story. They're usually a lot more silent than the clicky version, but I say usually because the feel and sound of these switches, even just across this nav cluster, is quite inconsistent. The tactility varies from okay to barely present at all, and overall I think these didn't come out so well. The clicky switches are also a little bit inconsistent, but it's not as bad or as annoying as it is on these tactile ones. One thing I noticed on both designs, it's quite obvious actually, is that on some switches it's pretty easy to make them click without actuating them. This phenomenon is pretty common on clicky switches, but it's very obviously noticeable on these. I guess it's to be expected of a hand-built keyboard that uses such sensitive and fundamentally analog switches, but it's definitely worth noting. Thankfully, APT have been doing experiments with varying the actuation distance. Originally, I think the plan was to have a built-in variable resistor which would allow you to manually change the actuation distance in an analog way, but experiments with that turned out less effective than that they had hoped. Still, they did include a keyboard shortcut that allows you to toggle the actuation distance to a 0.2 mm shallower depth from 2mm to 1.8mm, it's FN plus right shift, and this is a good thing to begin with. This significantly decreases, but does not fully eliminate the issue, so some inconsistency between the click and actuation remains. Originally it was pretty bad on the space bar, I kept not inputting spaces correctly, but with the shorter actuation distance and a few days worth of getting used to the keyboard, I haven't had an issue with this anymore at all. I had tried to replace the 80 gram spring with a 60 gram one, which of course you can do without desoldering as the switches are clip in, but I found that at 60 grams the spacebar didn't reset properly, which is probably because of the stabilizer. I don't know, maybe it just needed a few days of getting broken in, I'm not sure, but it's fine now. I personally like the clicky ones a lot better than the tactile ones, or at least what I've got to try of them, but I like clicky switches better than tactile ones in general, so no surprise there. The tactile ones just feel a lot more inconsistent though, and the tactility on many of them is very weak, so I find those a bit disappointing, but the clicky ones are great. So overall, good improvements all around, I'm really liking these, I had a lot of fun using them. They're not flawless, I'm sure the characteristics will vary a bit from board to board because of the hand-built, small-scale nature of these, and they're not the cheapest option either, at around $120 a piece, but they're certainly not the most expensive either, and they employ very durable and high-quality materials. So if you don't mind shelling out a bit more for a high-spec product, I can definitely recommend these. I like them much more than the typical premium brand keyboards that I run into. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on the clicky keyboard.